Hi, I'm Mark Gaylor. I'm a Sony Imaging Ambassador. Now, I've been using Sony's E-mount cameras for more than seven years. My first E-mount camera was an NEX7, which was a crop sensor mirrorless camera. Uh, that's now evolved into the Alpha A6000 series cameras, and I have one of them here, which is the Alpha 6600. Now, I've also uh, owned the very first uh, full-frame E-mount mirrorless cameras, which was the A7 and the A7R. And when those cameras were released, they had very few full-frame E-mount lenses. I'm holding one now that's the 55 f1.8. It's a cracking lens. Now, the cameras may come and go, um, but I'm going to I probably own this lens for life because it's pin sharp and I've got no reason basically to sell it. Um, the, uh, the optics here are pretty much perfect for what I need. Now this brings up an important point. There's an old saying that says that uh, we just date our cameras, but if uh, we make the right choice, we marry our lenses. Uh, lenses can be forever if we make the right choices. And I feel like I really made the right choice with this 55 f1.8. Now, um, we've got a, a range of different cameras, but they're all sharing the same E-mount from this Pro camcorder, the FS7 Mark II, uh, which has got one of my uh, G Master F1.8 uh, uh, lenses there, it's the 135mm, uh, one of my favorite lenses. Now it's usually used on my a7R 4 camera for shooting portraits and uh, for creating uh, figure ground separation on anything that I really want to make that subject pop from the background. But there's nothing stopping me putting that 135 lens on that pro camcorder uh, because it's got the same E mount. Now, typically what you might find uh, people who are maybe renting that FS7 for a day is they would probably uh, pick up one of these lenses. Uh, this is an SEL 18 to 110 constant F4. Uh, we can de-click the aperture so we can slide the exposure. It's got a very smooth uh, power zoom feature there. So it's an, it makes an excellent uh, cine lens. But we're not restricted to actually using that lens on the FS7. If we have any E-mount lenses, whether they're for the APS-C cameras or the full frame cameras, we can basically put them on there. We could even, for instance, put the kit 1650 lens from the APS-C uh, A6000 on that camera and we would still have the power zoom facility. This brings up an important point uh, which often Sony uh, like to say it's a one mount system. And this brings up a little bit of flexibility for us to move lenses between cameras. Now, some people would say that um, maybe we should only put APS-C lenses on APS-C cameras or full-frame lenses on full-frame cameras. But I have not found uh, that is a, a useful piece of advice. Perhaps my uh, favorite all-time prime lens uh, for these A6000 cameras is the full-frame 85 f1.8. It's small, it's affordable, it's light, it's fast focusing, and it's very, very sharp when mounted on these A6000 series cameras. So we don't have that equivalent uh, focal range as a prime in the A6000 range. So it makes absolute sense that I only buy one of these lenses and I don't start duplicating lenses for using on different systems. Uh, and just to mix it up a little bit more, now I typically do use the 100-400 GM when I'm shooting action sports on the full frame cameras. But occasionally, ever so occasionally, if I'm going out on a landscape adventure, I don't want to carry the extra weight on a messenger bag. So I'll take the 70 to 350. Um, this is a crop sensor lens, but I'm using it on the a7R4 for portability um, and reduce the size. And um, it's actually very sharp. And when I shoot in APS-C mode on a camera such as the A7R4, I'm only dropping to 26 megapixels in resolution, which is more than enough, I find, for many subjects. One of the other things that it does is it uh, increases the buffer for when I'm shooting action sports to over 300 images. And so that is another great advantage. Uh, I always think that this is basically uh, two cameras hiding in one body. It's both a great APS-C camera and it's also a great full frame camera. So, um, 
contrary to what some people might tell you about putting full frame lenses, there are many full frame lenses that, that work really, really well on the APS-C cameras. Now the 85 is great. I actually use the 55 rather than buying another 50 mil for the APS-C system. And also the 35 F1.8 is exceptionally sharp on the A6000 series cameras. So we've got three F1.8 primes that I would really, really recommend that uh, you consider uh, using on the APS-C. This also helps uh, some photographers who go into um, an APS-C system and then maybe thinking that they might gravitate or upgrade it at some point in the future to full frame. So that means you don't have to sell all of your lenses when you're going up to full frame because you already have the full frame primes. Now I probably would recommend maybe a couple of the pro quality zooms such as the 1655 um, uh, constant f2.8 aperture and also the 70 to 350. These are very good zooms, but I've also um, used the 70 to 200 f4 uh, G, which is a full frame zoom on the crop sensor bodies. It's great because it's got a wide aperture, it's fast focusing, and it's not too large. So contrary to what some people believe, this one mount system for Sony is giving you great advantages from putting your lenses onto a pro camcorder that you may have hired for the weekend to shoot uh, maybe a music video, um, to move um, lenses, APS-C lenses to your full frame body when you need to travel light, and also use um, good quality primes on your crop sensor bodies just to increase the flexibility of this system.